Well, hello, it's Vince with TST. Welcome back to the garage. This is episode two of the Cherokee build, the teardown. Take a look at the timeline below. I split this up into chapters so you can skip around if you want. You may have noticed it's been quite a while since episode one. Well, life comes at you fast sometimes. Ended up with an unspecified virus of unknown origin. That put me down for about three weeks, uh, more importantly, Four weekends were kind of shot. And I had a buddy that was gonna go down with me to Moab. He broke his ankle. So unfortunately, that kind of uh, ruins our Moab trip for this spring. So either of us did not get very far in our Jeep projects. And uh, yeah, unfortunately we're not gonna make it. The new plan is we need to get this thing done by mid-June. I gotta get this thing out of the garage. I got other projects I gotta get in and out. And we gotta get these on the Montana trails and get it tested out and have some fun camping and breaking stuff on the Jeeps. With all that said, let's get on with the teardown. As with any major Jeep project, we gotta start with getting it all jacked up. I got some 12 ton jack stands that I'm throwing underneath the frame rails. 12 tons have a lot of height. It's a good alternative when you don't have a lift. First, you gotta say the magic words so the Jeep doesn't fall over. Little tip for heavier wheels, throw a pry bar underneath and help lift it off. Anything that helps me save my back is a win in my book. Pulling the nuts off the top of the shock and dropping down below to pull off the bottom ones. Brake calipers also have to get out of the way. The front and also the rear will have to fully be stripped down so we can weld on the trusses. rod. And drop the drag link. I don't know what the hell was going on. I'm pulling the front track bar here. For some reason, I could not get to the nut on the back of this lower mount. It had been a few years since I installed this. This was part of the lift, so I don't remember how hard it was to get on. I ended up cutting away the mount here so I could get a wrench on that. Good thing with the truss is I'm replacing all the mounts anyway, so it works out. Another day doing some more work. Unfortunately, it would have been really nice to get in with a pressure washer and clean off the frame before I started any work on this, but I didn't. So I have to blow out all the dust that falls off as I do this. Pulling the hubs, pulling the knuckles, and pulling the axles out. This passenger side hub has never been out, so it's always fun to pull these. Usually you still have your steering hooked up, so you can actually use your steering to push the hub out. Just gonna pull out a bigger hammer and use a few chisels. Not too big a deal, this one wasn't seized too bad. I've worked with a lot worse. With not meeting the Moab date, I'm really considering doing a WJ knuckle swap. We'll see, it's kind of a lot of work. Not sure if the wheels I have right now clear the WJ knuckles and calipers. I might mock something up and see. And if it clears, I might consider doing it. Dropping the front axle, 
Pro tip, uh, remember to take the spring clips off the actual axle buckets. Forgot to do that. Pulling the track bar mount, I will be welding this back on when I install it again. Taking off my sweet light bar. Gotta take my license plate off, don't want to scratch it. Rhodesian Ridgebacks are awesome dogs, but they are not known for their retrieving. Hey, you can get it. You can get it. Where's your ball? Better stick with a golden or a lab if you want to play fetch with your dog. front bumper and messing with my rear drum brakes. I'll eventually swap these to discs whether it's a Terraflex kit or piecing together parts from a ZJ to do a disc swap. Some PBE blaster on the U-bolts. Before you dive into these always take a picture or at least leave the other side untouched so you always have a reference to go back to so you can rebuild it. And I highly recommend getting one of these brake tools. It makes the springs so much easier to get on and off. That with the needle nose pliers and you can get most of your work done. Axle flange nuts coming off. and out with the old axle. Disconnecting the brake lines and pulling the backer plate. Lower shock mounts undone. I'll be cutting these old style mounts off and reintegrating them into the new truss. Decided to drop the oil and pull the carrier while the axle was still mounted to the Jeep. Mostly so I'm not spilling oil as I move it around the garage. Just a bolt. And that oil still looks really nice. Nice thing about most of the Dana axles is they already have orientation marks on the caps and the housing. You can see on mine I have an H stamped in from the factory. On the other side the H is rotated 90 degrees. If yours doesn't have this you'll have to take the time to mark these and make sure they're installed exactly as they were before they came off. Top to top and the correct side. When these axles are manufactured, they are line board, so each cap needs to go where it was originally at when it was line board, or you're going to have a slight mismatch and possibly carrier bearing failures. Pulling the drive shaft. I had replaced these with U-bolt style yokes. These are quite a bit stronger than the strap style that originally comes on these. U-bolts off. As part of the new truss design, I'm going to go to a U-bolt eliminator style perch mount. It's more of a flange mount, so you're able to use four high strength bolts instead of the normal torque to yield U-bolt. And the Dana 44 comes off, ready to be 3D scanned. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the rear angle block off the leaf spring pack. When I weld on my new U-boltless perches, I'm going to make sure those are set at the correct angle so I don't have to use these type of blocks. Since I have the double carden rear drive shaft, I need to make sure my pinion points directly at the transfer case so I don't have any driveline vibration problems. And off come the JCR sliders. I'm trying to be careful removing these. I want to list these on Craigslist or Facebook to help recoup some of the project cost. There's a good amount of engineering that went into these to make sure they fit. Unfortunately, it makes them kind of a complex system to install. These use a tapered countersunk bolt with a 5 16 hex drive. They strip out awfully easy, and I even used anti-seize on these. I had two that needed to be drilled out, so pull out the floor jack and a cordless drill. You got yourself a reverse drill press. Careful not to add too much pressure, I need to resharpen my drill bit after this. 
Taken these off, I forgot how much of a pain these were to install. There's a ton of bolts holding them onto the pinch seam, holding them onto the frame rail, holding them onto the rocker panel. Looks like I should have siliconed or welded that hole shut. I don't remember if the instructions called for that or not, but this seems to be a little bit of a problem. Make sure to close that hole if you're installing a set of these. Taking all the pinch seam to frame rail brackets off. Like I said, this is a pretty complex system to install. On to the rear bumper removal. Of course, Jeep decided to use Torx drive bolts on these. And of course, I was missing the right size bit. I think it was a T45. I have no idea what I did with it. It's floating around the shop somewhere. So I was just being really careful with a little bit undersized Torx bit, and that came off just fine. Air ratchet for the win. The rest of the bolts were all hex head bolts, so I'm glad Jeep decided to mix and match everything. Sure I'm doing this wrong, but these top bolts I could not get to from underneath. I decided just to pull this filler strip out. Easier to do this than try to pull all the other rusted bolts. I kind of felt bad because this strip was still in really good shape. Got my access to them and pulling them straight out. That's the bulk of the teardown for now. Front and rear original bumpers are in fantastic shape, so I'll probably list those on Facebook or Craigslist. And of course, listing those JCR sliders. Well, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to leave a thumbs up. Or if you really liked it, I mean, go ahead and subscribe. Got a lot more Jeep stuff coming. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and we will see you on the next one.